Let's read Colossians chapter 2, and we read 1 right down to 15. Are you ready? Yeah. Put your phone in silence. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you. Paul is writing to the church at Colossae in prison, and those at Laodicea. As far as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of man, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. For in him, Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and power. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without end by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And this speaks of the new birth. Buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the workings of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and on circumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Having wiped out the unwritten of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphant over them in it. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord God, that you um, are with us, Lord. I pray that um, your word will come alive in the hearts of your people, Lord, that they will mix faith with it, Lord, and experience the blessing of this scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to continue what I left off several weeks ago, and I was wanted to just move on, but I had the nudge just to complete it today. On the subject, have complete in Christ Jesus. The church of Colossae um, was having a problem with identity because of heresy that came into the church. And so the Apostle Paul is saying to all believers there at that time that we are complete in him, in Christ. Our position in Christ Amen? That's what Paul is talking about. Our identity. And that is what we will look at today in another 20 minutes or so. Verses 10, I will clue in. And you are complete in him who is ahead of all principality and power. I believe when we know that we are in Christ Jesus and walking in that knowledge, I believe that we will experience experience a greater blessing, an understanding of the new covenant, understanding who we are in Christ Jesus. I don't believe that God just saved us and just preparing us for heaven. And that is a guarantee, and he said, um, for God so loved the world, you know that scripture, that if you believe in him, you will have everlasting life. And that is a promise of God. We have that promise. But while we're living in 
this body, even now, and planet Earth, we need to know who we are as believers. We need to know about our identity as believers. Amen? See, the church of Colossae, Paul never visited this church, but one of his pastors came to talk about what was happening in this church. There's a great study in this. And they were faced with false teaching that was threatening the church about their identity. There was all those who were saying there was something more to the central teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. The false teaching was a mixture of uh, the Christian teaching, of course, in the Jewish tradition and pagan philosophy. And we have our share today, the cults, that are trying to play that, you know, they embrace Christianity, but they have all the other stuff that does not add up. Amen? And that is a, a false church. Amen? But it's not Jesus plus something, but Jesus alone. It is Jesus alone. There should be nothing allowed in the church of Jesus Christ to substitute who he is. He should have the preeminence in the church and in our lives. He is superior to everything. That's why we were worshiping this, this morning. Amen? Every aspect of our being and my being needed to be touched and be transformed by him. The church. Everything we do about in this place here should be about Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen? Amen? I know in the church we have different cultures, respectfully, and I love cultures. I'm a man of cultures. I was born in cultures. But there's only one culture in the kingdom of God, and that is a kingdom culture. God has taken us from all people groups and ethnic, ethnic groups, I mean, ethnos mean nations, and has made us one in Christ. We are one body. Amen? So there may never be tugging here and there of one culture to the other culture. Amen? We will celebrate cultures, but we celebrate our new identity in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. So there should be no room in the church of Jesus Christ for heresy because Jesus is the incarnate God. He is a God who came in the flesh through the virgin birth. And we need to believe that. If you do not believe that, you are missing it all. For you to be saved, really, you need to believe this, that he is God that was manifested in the flesh. And that's a teaching on of itself. So there should be no room for heresy. Christ is all and all. That's why the Apostle Paul writes into the church of Corinth, and they had their, their moment. All the churches had people coming in and, and giving their own flavor or their own doctrine, old teaching. And, and Paul had to write to bring correction, and that's what is happening today. And now people having all these revelations. Uh, they probably had the dream about something else, but there's no other than Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. That's when Paul writes to the church at Ephesus that was, was, was you know, having this problem too. He said, um, he prayed that, that God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. That they will know who he is, the great I am. Amen? 
So Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He said to them, I determined not to know anything about you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I don't want to know anything what you guys say. All is wrong. I only believe Jesus, the Jesus who was nailed to the cross, who was buried, that he came alive, and he's alive forevermore. That's the Jesus we believe in. And that's the Jesus that is coming back again. You know, when Jesus stood before the disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1, and he, they went have, Jesus went up, disappeared, and they all gazed, oh. And the angel said, hey, the same Jesus that went up you, is the same Jesus is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's coming back, yes, for the church raptured. That's another teach, And he's coming back. The judge, amen, as the great king of all the earth, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, amen, and he could come anytime, amen. So let's get back to this. We are complete in him. You don't have to look for anything else. Your salvation is secure. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus was shed uh, for the remission of your sins and to bring you into this new culture, the culture of the kingdom of God. So you are complete in him, and that involves completeness and perfection. You say, Pastor, we're going with that word, perfection. Well, we're not there yet, but God is perfecting us uh, day by day, day by day. By the work of sanctification. Amen? You are complete in Christ when you are saved. And you are presently in that position. Complete in Christ. Why? Because we are made pure, pure through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? We are being cleansed by God. I know you heard this before, but you need to hear it again because uh, sometimes, you know, we get this feelings, you know, look, I, I am failing here and failing there. There's nothing taboo about that. You're a child of God. Amen. Full stop. Amen. Amen? Period. You're a child of God. Your name uh, is written down uh, in God's book in heaven. Amen. Full stop. Amen? You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Full stop. Amen? Period. That's it. We've been washed and cleansed, and now you and I can stand before a holy God. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. We are not complete in anything we did. I can't. You cannot. But because of our position and identification with Christ. Jesus did it all. Our identity is in Christ. He is my everything, my friends. He is your everything. It is very important for us to know and believe. In verse 11, it says, in him or in whom. In verse 12, it said, with him. Verse 13, together with him. You see, in him and with him, that means of our identity. And we will find these phrases in him, with him, together with him, throughout the phrases, or throughout the Pauline epistles. This truth will powerfully liberate you and I if we only get it. If we only understand it and walk in it. If we really understand who we are in Christ Jesus, you and I will not be up and down, in and out, faltering, beating up yourselves. Hallelujah. Our identification with Christ means Christ in me and I am in Christ. Our identification is 
is in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We have a perfect standing with God, my friends. Because the Bible said in verses 9, 4, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so this verse reveals that we have in Christ all that we need for life and godliness. There's no shortest, really. We have his grace, that unmerited favor of God. We, we have his power, amen, his wisdom, his peace, his full provision to live as believers of Jesus Christ in this world. He said, Pastor, you don't know, I live in uh, I'm a shortage and this is short and I'm uh, maybe material things, but you know God is our provider. Amen? God will meet every need in your life. Amen? Bible said in 2 Peter 1, verses 3, His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, by which we have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. We are saved by His power. Amen? <laughs> we are energized by his power, kept by his power. We are fully equipped in Christ with every tool that we will need to use for the kingdom of God. We have been given victorious living in Christ. I like this word, victorious. Because that's the sole reason Jesus Christ died for you and I, to give us victory. Because all of us were living in defeat. Amen? But Christ came into our lives to give us victory, to have the upper hand. Amen? To be overcomers. As it said in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4, this is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith in God. Amen? So we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to believe that and respond to the knowledge of who we are as believers. If we ever going to be victorious in this world, over the flesh and the devil. Amen? We need to know who we are in Christ. This means we will need to change our thinking and believe what the Word of God says concerning who we are in Christ Jesus. Believe what Jesus has said. Amen? We don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to fail, but if we do, <laughs> Jesus is right there. Amen? He will forgive us. Amen? If you're weary and tired, you come to him. He will give you rest for your soul. Amen? And that's why the scripture says here, Christ in us, the hope of glory. The indwell in Christ is our hope. So instead of looking at ourselves from the standpoint of what the Bible says about us, that we are complete in him, and we are sons through faith in Christ Jesus, sometimes we look at ourselves through the high of our natural understanding. Amen? So the Bible said the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Amen? But you are not natural. You are spiritual. Amen? You came alive, amen? So we need to look through those lens 
the lens that when he said in Ephesians, as you've been quickened and made, uh, and, and made alive in Christ, and, and understand it now that you are sit, sitting in the heavenly place. That's your position. Amen? I mean, you have authority. Say, Pastor, I have a. Yeah, you have authority. Amen? Same word that he gave to, the, to Adam and Eve, you shall have dominion. You have dominion. You have authority as a representative of who, who Christ is in the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. Because why? We have a new standing with God. Amen. The reason we fail in life because we keep looking at the past. We keep looking at all the things we did and not knowing about your new creation. Second Corinthians 5 said, you are a new species in God. The whole is gone and the new has begun. Hallelujah. I do not answer to the whole, Paul. I answer to the new. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's forgiveness, my friends, is complete. Amen? It's complete. As I said here in 13 of Colossians, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all. Say all. all. Not some. All. all. Amen? All means all. Amen? You are forgiven when you and I repent and turn to him. Amen? So don't look back. You're a new creation. You're a new species. You have a new standing with God. Amen? The whole is gone. Amen? And the good thing about one is that you have a right standing with God because Christ has made you that way. He became sin for you. Second Corinthians 5 went on. He became sin for you. And everybody likes that. Oh, praise. But, for the, but the other, the B means he became sin for, um, for you, that you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I say, oh, my. That's a big one. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Jesus did it for you. Amen. You look a lot better in Christ. Amen. Because now he's clothed you, uh, amen, with this robe, hallelujah. He's put on that righteousness, that right standing. And that's why, you know, it means to do right things, <laughs> amen. Now we have a new nature, amen. And everything we do is due to it right. We, you know, that whole Adamic nature is dead, amen. Dead and trespasses and that, that's gone, amen. Now we have a new Standing with God. Amen? God declares every believer righteous and acceptable unto him. Amen? And it's been called, be all accomplished by the grace of God. Amen? So today, understand your new identity in Christ. Amen? He declare us righteous based on the death and the resurrection of of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now you and I are seated with Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. That's so a wonderful revelation that you and I now, hallelujah, is clothed in this new garment, the garment of righteousness. Amen? Look at, look, let's look at verses 11 at Colossians chapter 2. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised. This is not a right of, um, of the Old Testament. Circumcision was a mark of the, the covenant God made with Abraham. But this is circumcision of the art. Amen? When we get born again, God cut off that whole thing. You're no longer the whole. You're a new. You have a new identity. Amen? It said there, when you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision. Amen? He delivered you, Colossians said, out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his dear son. Amen? 
So now you and I have this new identity, amen. The cutting away of the sinful nature. And now you and I, because of this new nature, amen, we have the capacity, the ability to live godly through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. We have the power now to live godly and right. That's why um, in Galatians said that you should walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Amen? Meaning that your walk now is to please God, to resist all the fleshly things. Amen? And now walk in your new standing. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why I said to resist the devil, and he surely will flee from you. Amen? So we have this capacity to, to live this way. Why? Because of the indwelling presence of God in our lives. Amen? So when we get born again, born anew, born from heaven, hallelujah, God brings his Holy Spirit to live inside of me and you. And you and I need to walk in this way. To resist the whole Adamic nature that really wants to, to control us. And we have this new standing with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that sometimes we have this struggle with the flesh and the spirit. But you have the greater one that will overcome that urges and that feelings, amen, that the flesh wants you to go, amen, and the Spirit of God in you, amen, will have the help of hand, that you will please God, amen, in all things. You know, you and I have to practice these things. We got to live it out every day in our lives. We, we need to renew our thinking, amen. Jesus said, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. You know, if you think that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and your mind is renewed to that, you will walk that way. You will live that way. You will speak that way. You will walk as Christ's ambassador. Amen. In the earth. Hallelujah. What time is it? <laughs> Somebody said, don't watch it at time. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Romans, the sixth chapter, uh, reading some scriptures, and I'm going to close. Verses 3. Have you forgotten? You know, the verses 1 and 3 mean, should you continue in sin? Can you, if you're a believer, should you continue living that old lifestyle? Paul is writing in the church at Rome. I mean, you're a new species. Amen. And he said, have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ in baptism, means you're being baptized into Christ. I don't believe this is water baptism. Although water, water, water baptism will, uh, will speak of, uh, of the internal work of God in our lives. Amen? But you and I were baptized into Christ. We join him in his death. For we die and we're buried with Christ by baptism. So you and I, although we live in now, our old man is dead. Amen? Kaput. Buried. Amen? And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father... Now, he said, we also may live new lives. Talk like what you are. Believe like who you are. Complete in Christ, your new identity. Oh, you said, Pastor, you know, we live in this world, this and that happens, you know. But listen, 
You are in the world, but not of this world. And God is leaving you here and empower you to be who you are as representatives of him. Hallelujah. You said, Pastor, you know, you don't live in the, um, you don't live in the world. You, I mean, you don't work in the world. You don't know what's out there. Yeah, I know. I used to live work in the world. I know it's all out there. Amen. I know what Slewfoot does. It's the devil. Jesus said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you have life and you have it abundantly. Who are you going to choose? Amen. Since we are before his fight, since we are being united with him in death, we will also be raised to life as he was. And it's coming, we will, in that bodily resurrection. Amen? Verses 6. We know that our old sinful selves, which is the Adamic nature, were crucified with Christ so that sin, let me repeat, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. And for sin to lose its power in our lives, you got to feed your spirit, man, with the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus. Feed it with the Word of God. So when the devil comes in, <laughs> you will identify that who he is and what he's trying to do, and the new man will put him to flight in Jesus' name. Now, you know, Jesus was in the wilderness for the days, and he's the son of God, the incarnate God, and the devil came to tempt him. What about us? But Jesus put him to flight, amen, by speaking the word of God, the spoken word of God to him. And that's the reason you and I need to be students of God's Word, to study God's Word, that our minds will be renewed by the Word of God so that we will know who we are and stand strong in that revelation. Hallelujah. The whole man is dead. We no longer slaves to sin. We were born again, we put off the whole man and put on a new man. And it's good for women too. <laughs> that new man, that new you, was created in Christ on the cross. Amen? Verses 7 said, For when we die with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And you got to look at that scripture and said, I am not going there. I am being set free from the power of sin. You and I can choose not to be controlled by the enemy or ruled by sin. All you and I need to do is yield our new ourselves to him. Yield to righteousness. That's our new master. Amen. Hallelujah. In verses 8, I'm going through this. And since we die with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. And we will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. We're talking about uh, uh, spiritual death here. Amen. We will die in the flesh. I just announced a few. Amen? But we will never, never die spiritually. S Jesus took care of that. Amen? Hallelujah. Death no longer has the power over him or dominion over him. When he died, he died once, this good Jesus, to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives with the glory of God. Verse 11 says, so you also sh should consider yourselves... Or the other words, reckon yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and life to God through Christ Jesus. And the word reckon means that we need to accept what God says about us is true and live it out in the power of the indwelling spirit. 
I walk into the grocery, and I was going down the aisle, and, and I heard somebody praying in tongues. And, and he, it was the you know, bread and thing, and I, and I looked around. Oh, it's one of our old-time members of our church. So I sneak up, <laughs> and I touch his shoulder. He looked around and said, oh, my gosh, you even have to pray tongues to choose your bread? <laughs> and he hugged me, and I hugged him. And I'm so glad that this man, he living this thing out. He said, hey, name I live, bro. I got to pray in tongues because I got to be strong. Because I got to live for him. The days are short. I got to redeem the time. And he's, I have to live this way. And I'm thinking, that is what we're supposed to be living. Isn't that how the Bible said, pray without ceasing? Amen. Amen. Should we will escape all what is going to happen in the earth? Because even the deceived, even the elect will be deceived. The very elect will be saved. Hallelujah. Can I read this out quickly and then I should close? God says when we were quickened and made alive in Christ... Our old man, Adamic nature, is gone. Bye-bye. And we have a new nature. Amen? And I got to feed this new nature with the steak of God's word, the meat. Amen? I got to feed it. Feed the spirit man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you and I could be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Amen? I just love the Bible. And because we have this new nature, new identity, we should not let sin control the way we live. Do not give in to sinful desires. If the whole man is crucified, he's dead. Count him dead. Sin should have no power, no dominion over the believer. He said, Pastor, this is a great preaching deep. Yeah, we got to grow up. We got to be overcomers. We got to be victorious. We got to see what the scripture said in Romans, for we are more than conquerors through him who gives us the ability. Amen? We want to triumph in Christ. The Bible was, Jesus did not come just to take us out. And give us eternal life, I know. But that we will live victorious in this life. Amen. Hallelujah. And you are to encourage me, and I'm going to encourage you. Amen? Verses 13. I'm going to close. There's so much, oh my gosh. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Let your tongue be controlled, every part of your body. Instead, give yourself completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body <laughs> as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. The law couldn't have done anything to the Jewish people. You know, I could go to the mirror, look at my face, it's dirty, but the mirror has no power to remove the door. That was the law. But now, <laughs> this new law. Romans 8, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, had made, me, made you and I free from the law of sin and death. This thing working in us. Amen? Hallelujah. The spirit of God. It said you and I live under the freedom of God's grace. Let's stand to our feet. It's a lot. Whew. 
our new identity. I keep going on it. Yeah. You see, if you don't get this one right, nothing else will work for you. You see, I used to love the teaching of Miles Monroe on the kingdom of God. Great book, great author, great pastor, gone to be with the Lord. But he always talks about the kingdom of God. Taken from the scriptures. Now how we are Christ's ambassadors. Amen? And an ambassador knows who they are in that country that, that, that he was sent to. Or she sent to. They don't have to worry about anything. I want to be an ambassador like that, but we are ambassadors in the spiritual sense. God has provided everything for us in this life. Everything. But we need to be obedient to that word. Amen? I have not forgotten really about our giving this morning, leaving it for last. The Bible said he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has given us everything that we need. There should be no lack in our lives. Paul writes to the church at Philippi, he said, For my God will supply all our needs, not our wants, all our needs, all the things that we need. Matthew chapter 6, verses 30, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that we need, God will supply. We have a covenant with God. And I like to repeat again the scriptures in the Old Testament. David said it again and again. I just, because it's in my spirit, David, understand that covenant. I was young, now I'm whole, and I've never seen God sharing forgotten, begging bread, whatever he wants, translation. And God bless us with so much. Amen? Hallelujah. So I want to thank you for your blessing to this church. And that is just the outworking of your love, really. That is just the outworking of who you are as a new believer, is to be a giver, amen? To be a, an encourager and to be a blessing, really, because you have a new identity, and this is how we operate as believers, amen? And why? God has placed us in this world as a ministers of God's word to bring reconciliation between the man and God to share God's word amen so I want to thank you for your faithful giving in this church amen hallelujah 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 we have a new identity and a new position as believers, amen? And we do things according to the Word of God, not according to the dictates of our flesh, amen? We don't, we don't, we're not moved of what we see. The Bible said the children of God walk by faith and not by sight. We're not moved because we don't have enough. We are moved by what the Word of God says. It is good to give and it's good to be a blessing. Amen? It is a good thing to do those things. Why? Because God has left, placed us in this, this world for such a time as this. Hallelujah. So thank you so much. You could give many ways, many ways in our church. Electronically, 
physically in the boxes wherever you, you go, this thing to drop your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. But if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, or you are being in and out and you're having all this kind of struggles, I want to say to you, stop. Think it over. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Amen? Don't, don't you know, procrastinate. That's, this, that's the sin of, of, of much people, right? And more people procrastinating and, oh, I don't know if I should do it. Should I? I, I have to do this. You know, no, no, no. That's the work of the enemy. Amen? That's the work of the enemy. He doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't want you to enjoy the blessings that God has already in store for you. And he wants you to be bound and stay bound. Amen? So today you can give your life to Christ and, and, um, and come into this uh, new identity. Amen? This is an identity in Christ. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you. Thank you for your people this morning. Thank you for the blessings, oh God, the work that you have done in their lives and the work that you're still doing. Thank you that you created us in this new image. Thank you, oh God, that you continue working in your people's lives, your people, Lord. Bless them, strengthen them, empower them, give them peace. Give them joy, hope. God, I pray, God, that you will just go before them. Make ways for them, O oh God. Cause them to increase more and more in you, Lord. Pray your blessing upon those, O oh God, will say yes to you today. Those who are watching and those who are listening. You have not committed your life to Christ. You could say yes to Jesus. It's not a, a long prayer. It's just a short prayer. Jesus, I acknowledge you as my as the as a Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that you die for my sins. I turn to you in, in full surrender and I commit my life to you. Forgive me. So simple prayer. He said, if you confess me with, with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So, Lord, bless your people, O oh God. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer wherever you are, you could text the word, new life. Hallelujah. Text that word, new life. So we could get in touch with you and be a blessing to you. Praise God.